Welcome to the 8th episode of our video tutorial series, where we delve deeper into the capabilities of the Crossroad Generator tool for Unreal Engine 5. In the previous episode, we discussed the Procedural Content Generation Framework. We demonstrated how seamlessly you can integrate this framework with our Crossroad Generator to efficiently populate your levels with foliage or custom assets. This collaboration streamlines the level building process, allowing for faster development with minimal effort. By leveraging the procedural capabilities of PCG, you can achieve unique and diverse aesthetics. Additionally, we showcased how to easily integrate high-quality assets from the Quixel Megascan library, enabling you to elevate your project to cinematic quality in minutes. In this chapter, we will discuss the new features and improvements introduced in our latest update, version 1.2 of the Crossroad Generator. The most significant enhancements in this update focus on performance during the editing of road systems in the editor. Another major update is the addition of a utility widget tool that allows for baking created road infrastructure into static meshes or nanite meshes, optimizing your project. Last but not least, new customization modules have been added to the Crossroad Generator, extending the versatility of this tool. This includes new road types, end spline meshes, bridge types, and much more. We encourage you to watch this chapter and explore all these new features. Let's start with a fresh project. First, drag and drop the road generator blueprint into the editor. Extend the spline by clicking on the end spline point, holding the Alt key, and dragging. Before enabling performance mode, let's turn on some additional modules for demonstration purposes. Turn on the curbs, road line, sidewalks, and guard lines modules. Also, enable the frame rate display on the screen to monitor performance. The Crossroad Generator is equipped with high-quality mesh modules, which can demand high performance during real-time editing in the editor. Editing the splines with these high-poly modules can decrease the frame rate, causing lagging that can be annoying and impact productivity. To address this, we are introducing the Performance Mode. When you enable this mode by selecting the Performance Mode option to on, the high-poly modules will be temporarily replaced by low-poly proxy modules. Curbs, sidewalks, and all non-essential modules are unloaded to make spline editing faster. After you are satisfied with the shape of the road, you can disable the performance mode by selecting the off option. All the modules you have added to the road will then be reloaded. Now, editing is much faster than before, even when working with bridge modules. You can see the lagging is gone and the response when editing spline components is immediate. While the performance mode is set to on, some features of spline mesh components are suppressed to optimize the editing process. However, essential features like snapping and landscape deformations remain available, allowing you to easily set up the layout of your level. We recommend turning on performance mode every time you're editing the splines to avoid any lagging and performance drops. As mentioned earlier, when performance mode is on, non-essential modules are unloaded. This does not apply to the powerline module and road signs module. When you enable these modules in performance mode, low-poly proxy modules are loaded to help you set up your road. Note that cables and power pole extra modules are not supported in performance mode to optimize editing to the maximum. Once you've set up your road, simply switch performance mode off to see the final result of your road design. Let's move on to the next new features of the Crossroad Generator version 1.2. We'll start with a fresh road, and for demonstration purposes, let's turn on the road lines, curbs, and sidewalks. In version 1.2, we are introducing new road types. You can now switch between four main road types, ranging from a one-lane road to a four-lane road. Another new feature is the road median. When you enable this feature, you can extend the road up to eight lanes. We encourage you to experiment with these settings to find the right road configuration for your project. 
Additionally, you have the option to change the median type, with three available options, type A, type B, and type C. This gives you the possibility to create 12 different variations of road types. Additionally, custom end meshes for spline modules have been added. Each module, such as curbs, sidewalks, road medians has the option to enable start and end meshes at the ends of splines. To enable these, simply type start mesh or end mesh into the filter bracket. This will filter all available end meshes across all modules. Let's enable all start meshes to see the result. You have the option to choose between multiple variations of end meshes, giving you overall control over the appearance of the entire road by selecting different endings for each road corner. This customization allows you to tailor the road to your specific needs. We encourage you to play around with the settings to find the best solution for your project. Note that each road ending whether left, right, starting, or ending has its own custom settings, giving you complete control over the final look of the road. Additionally, you have the possibility to load your custom meshes to further customize your road. We will showcase how to customize the road in the next chapter dedicated to the customization of the road generator. In the Crossroad Generator version 1.2 we introduce a new upgraded roadline module, which offers extensive customization options for road lines. To get started, let's drag and drop the road generator into editor and select the four-lane road type. Click on the end spline point, hold the Alt key, and drag to extend the spline. Activate the road line module in the road generator settings. Navigate to road line settings. In this settings let's enable show road line numbers option. This feature marks each road line with a number, simplifying the customization process. For demonstration purposes, let's turn off all road lines except road line number 1. The module provides several customization options, including enabling road line variations with three distribution options. You can also select from six different road line types. If you choose the random distribution option, all variations are randomly distributed along the spline. To view and customize these variations, go to the advanced options and look for the road line meshes. Additionally, the global settings offer options to enable roll, scale, shadows, or collisions for the road lines. Experiment with these settings to achieve your desired road appearance. It is worth mentioning that you also have the option to override materials, locally offset each road line if necessary, or set the cull distance, for instance. The next feature we'll cover is the snapping system, which has also received several upgrades. Let's create a couple of roads and snap them together. When you snap one road to another, a green circle appears at the end of the snapping points. This green circle serves as a simple visual aid, representing the connected endpoints. To better understand the snapping points, enable the Show Spline Endpoints option. The arrows that appear are visual representations of the tangents at the end snapping points, helping you set up the road as needed. Each spline has a starting and an ending point, represented by the letters S and E. At the starting point, the tangent directs into the spline. And at the ending point, the tangent directs outside the spline. By flipping these tangents, you can connect the roads in specific ways. 
By default, when snapping the roads together, the road will always try to create a smooth transition between the two roads. In the advanced snapping settings, you have the option to flip the tangent at the starting and ending spline points, allowing you to connect the roads in opposite directions. This setting can be useful in certain situations. By flipping the tangent on the spline point, you can see the road directing the opposite way, resulting in a non-smooth transition. This option is particularly useful when creating crossroads. Note that there are additional options available in the advanced snapping settings. You can enable or disable snapping on each end spline point individually, and you can also disable snapping for the entire spline in the main snapping settings. Additionally, you can set the snapping radius for each snapping point, lock the tangent on the snapping point, or set the radius of the tangent at the point. Let's move on to another new feature of the Crossroad Generator version 1.2, the new customization module. With this module, you can fully customize your roads. To activate it, enable the customization module in the road generator settings. Initially, nothing will happen because you need to feed the customization module with custom meshes. Let's take a look at the customization settings. There are two general modules for customization. The first module is called Static Mesh at Spline. You can use this module to scatter static meshes along the spline. To make it work, you need to assign a mesh to an array in the module settings. For demonstration purposes, we have added custom meshes to the generator. Go to the Custom Module folder within the Mesh folder, where you will find several sample meshes that you can use to customize your road. Simply drag and drop your mesh into the array, and it will appear on the road. This module offers multiple settings to control your custom meshes on the spline, which we will discuss in more detail in the next episode dedicated to the customization of the road generator. The second general module for customization is called Spline Mesh. You can use this module to create continuous shapes like railings, custom curbs, or guardrails. You can also add your custom meshes at the spline points to further customize your roads. We encourage you to watch the next episode about customization to learn more about these settings. Another feature added to the Crossroad Generator is the expanded library of Crossroads. We have introduced new types, now available to you, including one lane up to four lane Crossroads, and an experimental roundabout Crossroad type. Additionally, we have extended the bridge library, allowing you to create various types of bridges ranging from one lane to eight lane bridges. You can explore the sample map provided within this project to learn about all the possibilities and features of the Crossroad Generator available to you. Thank you for watching this eighth episode of our video tutorial series. To delve deeper into the capabilities of the Crossroad Generator, we encourage you to explore all the tutorials available on our YouTube channel. If you're seeking to elevate your environment and create stunning scenes, the Crossroad Generator for Unreal Engine is an indispensable tool. You can find it on the Unreal Marketplace, and the link is available in the video description. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to render your tail with us.